Okay, hello everyone. My name is Kenta Murakami. Okay, thank you for your participating in my presentation. I am a member of Panasonic Automotive Systems Company. I'd like to talk about establishing a software-defined multi-display framework with unified HMI. Okay, before I begin my presentation, I'd like to take a moment to introduce myself. I'm working for Panasonic Automotive Systems for three years and focusing on graphic-related development, uh, especially display virtualization using unified HMI. I enjoy traveling and love coffee and ramen and the other delicious foods. <laughs> okay, let's start my presentation. Agenda is as follows. And uh, our other member presented about unified HMI in last year's Open Source Summit Japan. So some members have heard about unified HMI. So this time, I will introduce the newly committed unified HMI frameworks uh, in the section, what is unified HMI, which we added to GitHub and SEL UCB. And in how to use unified HMI on SEL section, I will share a simple testing procedure uh, that combines the newly committed framework with the one committed last year. Lastly, in future vision section, I will discuss our latest initiatives. The initial section on why unified HMI section will be the similar contents to past presentation. So for those who remember it, please feel free to relax. Okay, now let me explain why unified HMI is necessary in the automotive industry. First, Please watch the video summarizing the concept of Unified HMI. Okay, let's start. Unified HMI is an open source display virtualization technology developed by Panasonic. In this demo, we will show how Unified HMI enables to design and develop entire cockpit UI and UX efficiently across multiple displays without dependency on hardware. Here is a cockpit UI and UX development environment that virtualizes the physical automotive environment. For example, this environment virtualizes a cockpit consisting of AGL and two Yocto Linux to evaluate the cockpit UI and UX across multiple displays. This is a unified HMI associated layout design tool. It enables to develop cockpit UI and UX across multiple displays in the virtual environment. Take this sample graphic application of the Linux Penguin as an example. If you want to change layout of it, you can flexibly move and rescale the application across multiple displays. You can even design across display animations. Once the layout design is complete, you can easily verify the entire cockpit UI and UX in the virtual cabin environment. Now, you can see the designed animation across multiple displays and operating systems. Last, after verification in the cloud virtual environment, the developed cockpit UI and UX can be seamlessly deployed to the physical ECUs with same binary. In this way, Unified HMI enables to efficiently develop entire cockpit UI and UX by anyone, from anywhere, without dependency on physical automotive hardware. Therefore, it greatly contributed to reducing lead time and costs of entire cockpit UI and UX development. Okay, thank you for watching. In this video, there was an introduction about layout design tools but it is just a support tool and not Unified HMI's main framework. So I will not provide details in the presentation. Next, I will introduce trends in automotive industry. In recent years, the number of in-vehicle displays has been increasing, especially in high-end vehicles. For example, the appearance of head-up displays and the camera monitoring systems and the digitization of information display, such as meters. This has led to a focus on flexible application display technologies, 
across multiple displays, and the, these technologies are expected to provide new UI and UX. However, if we want to develop this flexibility by using existing graphics framework, ad hoc interoperability development of displays for each hardware platform is required. Conducting this ad hoc development for all car models and grades will significantly increase both time and cost. Therefore, there are needs in automotive industry for a software-defined display virtualization framework that separates software from hardware. <laughs> we at Panasonic Automotive Systems developed a software-defined display virtualization platform based on Bataille ZPU called Unified HMI. Unified HMI allows for flexible development of the entire cockpit and the cabin UI and the UX across multiple displays independent of hardware and OS configurations. The entire cockpit UI and the UX is developed using virtual environments such as the cloud and can be seamlessly deployed to the physical ECUs. Now, I will summarize the value of Unified HMI from the perspective of both automotive developers and users. Automotive developers will be able to agile in the software-defined cockpit UI and the UX development. Specifically, Unified HMI enables efficient and integrated cockpit UI and the UX development and evaluation across multiple displays. And uh, because it can seamlessly adapt to various car grades and models, it enables the reuse of software assets from old car models and grades. Automotive users can experience fast and personalized evaluation with cockpit UI and UX. Specifically, users can enjoy an upgraded customer experience through frequent on-the-air upgrades that improve UI and UX. Additionally, some of you may have experienced that when switching to a different car model, you feel the UI and UX was better in your previous vehicle. With unified HMI, cockpit UI and UX can be customized flexibly according to user experience, no matter of car grades and the model, easily. Unified HMI primarily provides value for automotive developers, but efficient development using Unified HMI also leads to a UI and UX experience for users. That meets user preference, thereby providing value for automotive users. Okay, next, I will provide a detailed explanation of the Unified HMI framework. Unified HMI consists of two main components. The first component is remote virtual GPU, which we refer to as RBGPU. It is shown in the green box in the below figure. It can render applications remotely in different SOCs or virtual machines via network. Main components of RBGPU were committed to GitHub and the UZL ACB last year. And we made a new commit for the new framework, RBGPU Wayland Proxy. It is shown in the yellow box to support Flutter applications. The second component is distributed display framework we refer to as DDFW. It is shown in the red box in the figure. This allows flexible layout control of applications across multiple displays by combined with RBGPU. We have newly committed this DDFW frameworks to GitHub and AZL UCB. <coughs> the following describes these two components in detail. First, let me introduce RBGPU. RBGPU is a network extension of virtual GPU, commonly used for GPU virtualization in virtual machines. 
RBGPU mainly consists of three components, but I will loop back driver, RBGPU proxy, and RBGPU renderer. Here, there is a framework called Batile Loopback Driver. Batile Loopback, a Batile Loopback is introduced in the previous session, but uh, it is the same name but absolutely different from it. Okay, as a mechanism of achieving a remote rendering by RBGPU, Batile Loopback Driver captures GPU commands generated by OpenGL ES in the kernel space and transmit them to RBGP proxy in the user space. Then RBGP proxy sends that GPU commands over the network to RBGP renderer on any other SOCs or virtual machines. Finally, RBGP renderer uses the GPU commands to render applications on that displays. RBGP also creates virtual input devices such as mouse, touch, and keyboard using U input. So if you touch a remote display, input events can be sent to applications via network devices and you can touch applications. Okay. We developed RBGP Wayland proxy to enable remote rendering of flat applications using RBGP. RBGP Wayland proxy is a Wayland server that can integrate with the unified HMI framework, including RBGP and DDFW of both components. This allows all applications that, ah, sorry, uh, that that can run on Wayland protocol, including AGL Flutter applications, to be applied within unified HMI. Additionally, by integration with DDFW, it facilitates easily layout control for multiple applications. Next is DDFW, as shown in the figure below. DDFW maps multiple cockpit physical displays into a single large virtual screen. By placing applications on the virtual screen, you can control the layout of applications across multiple displays easily. DDFW allows developers to control layout such as location, size, and display order of multiple applications. And it uh, if applications are placed across multiple displays on the virtual screen, RBGP will render those applications remotely in the corresponding SOCs or virtual machines. I will explain the components of DDFW. DDFW is newly committed to SEL UCB. And this is composed of three main components, which are committed in separate repositories on uh, GitHub. The unifi unified clustering tool, which we refer to as UCL tools, launch applications on multiple SOCs and virtual machines. Multiple applications are clustered together, managing their execution order and the life cycle. By using UCL tools on run RBGPU, uh, we can manage them as sender and the receiver, facilitating remote rendering of the applications. Unified layer tools, which we refer to as ULA tools, provide the ability to apply layout settings, such as display position and size on the virtual screen to the cluster applications. Unified HMI RBI window manager, which we refer to unified UHM RBI WM is a component for controlling IBI layers and IBI surfaces that run on Western IBI shell. This component allows for detailed layers of layers and surfaces using the ILM, ILM API of Wayland IBI extension. ULA tools create IBI layer and IBI surface, which are laid out on the virtual screen 
and UHMI Avia window manager displays them on Western, allowing the application to be rendered. In summary, UCL tools render applications remotely across SOCs and virtual machines by using RBGPU, and the URL tools create the application layout. Then, UHMI RBI WM applies the created layout and the application appears in the display. Thanks to this system, Unified HMI allows for flexible development of the entire cockpit UI and the UX across multiple displays independent of hardware and the OS configurations. Next, I will introduce how to use Unified HMI frameworks on AGL UCB, which we recently committed. Learning Unified HMI frameworks on AGL can be implemented in total seven steps. These steps contain from preparing your environment to freely controlling layers of application across multiple displays. In this section, I will introduce the details of those seven steps, focusing on differences from the AGL documentations. Okay, step one, how to prepare your environment necessary to run Unified HMI on AGL UCB and the flow of Unified HMI commands on demo environment. Currently, Unified HMI supports three platforms, x86 emulation, Raspberry Pi 4, and AGL reference hardware. To verify the operation of Unified HMI, you need to prepare at least two of the three platforms mentioned above, or use an Ubuntu PC with each of them providing display output. All platforms must be connected to the same networks and accessible by unique IP address and host names and ports. In the following verification procedure, it is assumed that two SOCs or virtual machines are each, each connected to a full HD displays with uh, arranged side by side as shown in the figure. Once the environment is ready, download the AZL software necessary to run Unified HMI. First, download the AZL software referring to download AZL software section in the AZL documentation, shown in the URL. After that, you have to get the Unified HMI recipes, which was recently committed in master branch. In the figure, Unified HMI recipes are in the meta UHMI directory, and the AZL UHMI features contain the, contains the feature to use Unified HMI on AZL. Now the software is downloaded from step three to step six, build and boot the AZL demo image. Step three, initialize the environment variables and the path settings in the build environment. If you add the AZL UHMI feature when initialized your build, Unified HMI frameworks can be installed your build. Step four, uh, sorry. Step four, customize your build, referring to AZL documentation. To add Unified HMI frameworks to installation target, please exit the following command and add the package groups for RBZPU and DDFW, which is separated to the local.conf file and installation target. Step five, build your AZL image. Currently, RBZPU supports various demo images such as AGL IBI Demo Flutter and IAGL IBI Demo Qt, but DDFW only supports images which can run Western, like AGL Image Western. In the following sections, I will introduce the steps for using AGL Image Western as a demo image. And finally, step six, once the build of the AGL demo image is complete, 
deploy images on each platform you need it. You prepared uh, referring to the AGL documentations. Here is the URL of deploying AGL image on x86. Okay, finally, in step seven, I will introduce how to use DDFW commands. Here, I will show the overview of the operational verification procedure using diagrams. For more detailed information, please refer to the readme under Meta UHMI, which was committed to AZL UCB master branch. Launching applications mainly require the creation of three JSON files and execution of two DDFW commands. In the following sections, I will explain what information each JSON file holds, and I will introduce how to execute DDFW commands using these JSON files. First, we will create a virtual screen def JSON file that holds information about execution environment for unified HMI frameworks. As shown in the diagram, virtual screen def JSON five holds information such as the host names and the IP address of the SOCs and the virtual machines, which we, which we refer to as nodes. It also holds a resolution of the connected displays and defines the layout of virtual displays when physical displays are mapped to the virtual screen. DDFW create the application layout on virtual screen defined by this JSON file. So please make this file for your environment. Okay. Therefore, when the physical environment changes, please modify the virtual screen def JSON file and restart the system services for DDFW, such as UCL launcher, URL node, and UHMI. IVIWM. Next, I will configure the application LAN settings. We will create an app JSON file that defines that application will run on which nodes. The app.json app file specifies the execution commands for the applications corresponding to the need nodes set in the virtual screen def JSON. By defining the necessary RBG GPU commands for both sender and receiver, as well as the execution information for the application to be rendered remotely, we can render applications across multiple displays easily. Once these JSON files are completed, by running the following command, you can execute the application as defined in virtual screen def JSON and app.json. Finally, we will configure and apply layouts for the executed application across multiple displays. We will create an initial vScreen JSON file to define the application layouts on the virtual screen set by virtual screen def JSON. The initial vScreen JSON determines the layout of virtual layers and virtual surfaces for the executed applications. Here, the V layer allows for organized rendering and compositing of V surfaces, and the V surface represents the virtual content and app render. After completing the JSON file by executing the following command, the running application on the before section appears across two displays according to the created layout. This concludes the introduction to the operational ver verification procedure. For more detailed information about the contents of the JSON files, please refer to the readme we contributed to AZL UCB master branch. And if you change layouts in uh, initial vScreen JSON and run the ULA tools command again, you will be able to see 
the changes in the application layouts easily. These slides have been uploaded to the OSS JWeb page under this session, so you can download and check them if you like. So please give it a try in this demo. Okay, finally, I will introduce our future vision. We are currently targeting on the following three activities to achieve more flexible virtual display framework with unified HMI. The first activity is enabling application graphics to render in and out between AGL and other operating systems such as Android. Currently, remote transfer of applications by our GPU is possible only between AGL and Linux. But in the future, we would like to support transferring applications from AGL to Android and un from Android to AGL. The second is future zonal architecture. In recent years, the evolution of high-performance computing has led to the consolidation of SOCs. However, due to the increasing number of displays and their physical alignment, there may be cases where the distribution of SOCs are necessary. In such cases, by using unified HMI to distribute the rendering resources to lower performance donor SOCs. This allows for flexible expansion of SOCs, enabling the development of UI and UX without worrying about application performance. We are advancing development on this in collaboration with ARM company. The third is extend unified HMI to more media, for example, audio and video and etc. Currently, only graphics applications are supported, but in the future, we aim to expand the media that can be controlled by unified HMI frameworks. Okay, we will be demonstrating unified HMI at HTEC Plus 2 uh, 2024 event, which will be held next month in Yokohama. We will show a series of SDB-related demos, including unified HMI, such as Future Zona Architecture demo and Concept demo of unified HMI within the Kamok app. For more detailed information about these events, please refer to the attached link. We look forward to your visit. Okay, finally, let's work together to create an ecosystem to enable new barriers of UI and UX in the multiple display with unified HMI. This QR code is our GitHub page about unified HMI. If you are interested in unified HMI, please access it and give it a try. OK, thank you very much for your listening. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Ah. I have two questions. Okay. Uh, one is the uh, in your architecture, uh, you assume the each display uh, connected to each SOC, each yes. issue. Uh, yes. So the is there no problem about the synchronization? Because the display is connected to different SOC, so the V-Sync signal is it, yeah. very hard to synchronize between two SOC. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Our framework uh, gets the uh, remote displays V-Sync and uh, send send back to the applications. So. Maybe some overhead uh, happened, but our application is synchronized with uh, any SOC's displays. Uh -huh. So the, does it mean the, the in this architecture, each SOC uh, render their own contents and yes. overlay the transport contents from the other SOC? Yes. Application is only running on the mm -hmm. 
left side SOCs, mm -hmm. and on, and in our framework, only send GPU uh, rendering command via networks. Ah, just command, not yes, the rendered content. Yes, yeah. yes, just uh -huh. command. So the, that's why the uh, I worry about the, the bandwidth of the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, our frameworks. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, mainly depends on network bandwidth. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, what, last question is the uh, I imagine the different situation. The when you think about the uh, e architecture, some SOC or some issue uh, doesn't have the GPU and DPU to render something, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they if they want to uh, display something mm -hmm. through the IBI screen. Uh, what uh, is the, it, it, this architecture can be a candidate to, to solve that problem also? Yes, uh, yes. Our unified architecture can can run on CPU. So, uh, yeah. Just <laughs> assuming it's a light <laughs> as soon as it doesn't have GPU. Okay. Give an example. If you add uh, for your FPC, <laughs> so please. <laughs> So supposing a use case that you even don't have a, a GPU or have a very limited power GPU in the HPC side, but you can use this architecture to route the archi route your uh, GPU commands to the remote uh, uh, SOC with the, uh, the, the the GPU. So that's actually the concept of we are working with uh, with ARM for the uh, display zone architecture. Thank you for your support, Jason. Okay, sorry. This second future zonal architecture concept. So my my question is uh, uh, and composite uh, from from the application side, composite from application mm -hmm. side. Uh, please show the uh, page uh, twenty. Okay. Twenty. This yes, 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 this right. So, if uh, we want to run a two way around application, mm -hmm. so which uh, component is needing a, a per application component? Which is a co uh, common component? My understanding mm -hmm. so, Western with IBI shell uh, is common component. Yes. Other component uh, without battery or GPU infrastructure uh, is a separate. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, component. So one will end up a uh, combination to the one RB GPU and uh, W policy. It's my understanding. So yes. is it right or uh, uh, my misunderstanding? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And one application needs one unified HMI or frameworks. Ah, yeah, yeah. So that means I uh, need to uh, create uh, more one battery GPU instance? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Uh, no. Not yeah. but. Uh, uh, GPU intense. Okay, when when our GPU is yeah. launched, it uh, create a, a display virtual display GPU virtual GPU device yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, device driver yeah, yeah. and application render applications using that GPU device driver. Mm. Application can use our GPU frameworks yeah. and render application remotely. Yeah. So. But uh, your ZP framework is yeah, commonly, one, yeah. one, yes, common, commonly <laughs> yeah. used. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Thank you for presentation. Thank I you. have maybe basic question. So, yeah. current car has uh, such a network for uh, like the IP address has an IP address or a, uh, host name, right? Mm -hmm. So, my question is: Do we have to add new network uh, the existing car or something? Yes, uh, if we want to use unified HMI framework and okay. uh, render applications on mm. multi displays, okay. the 
all SOCs are connected to the <coughs> same networks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, sorry. My question is: ah, okay, Usual car already has a, such a IP4 network or not? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, okay. do we need uh, add a new network or not? That is my question. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. I think it's highly dependent on the, 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 the car you are mentioned. <laughs> so some cars is really connected, and some very legacy car that they don't have uh, interconnections uh, uh, across uh, ECUs. So it really depends. But what we are, ha are trying to to, to uh, mention here is that we uh, consider a more um, an architecture that uh, uh, from now and to future future. Oh, okay. So if you're for existing vehicles, you want to apply this, you, you need to guarantee some connections between the ECUs. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much for your thank you. presentation. And, 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 and my question is uh, a bit more so related question. <laughs> so can I so can I understand that so, uh, so like that like so line three s s states so so far as the EC, so multiple ECUs have IP reachability mm. so basically uh, well theoretically we can use unified HMI mm. uh, so can I understand like this yes then uh, then if the IP traffic were carried through the, can, uh, the legacy CAN <laughs> network. Theoretically, it's possible. Uh, our frameworks only support IP and the port, uh, I, the transportation using IP and the port. So, so, no. uh, so uh, you are talking about just <laughs> layer three, okay? Yes. And uh, so my question is layer two. Uh, layer two. Ethernet. Uh, so basically, uh, so I, so I think you are assuming so mm. the so, so automotive grade Ethernet, right? Mm. Yes. Uh, 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 but theoretically, so I think so far as IP reachability can could be <laughs> could be used. <laughs> uh, so, uh, mm. said, uh, if uh, possible, uh, your uh, your question. So if possible to use uh, uh, IP network over the can FD, this infrastructure can be used or not? Uh, Is it right? Ah, uh, <laughs> theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe that. Ah. Okay, Jerry, sir. So, yeah, I think so. So, so basically, I think the connection methods is something customized. Is possible to customize the, uh, but uh, you know, I I think it's uh, quite uh, dependent on the on the performance or say the 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 uh, the bandwidth. <laughs> I, I I do understand so performance issue. So that's why I said theoretically. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Theoretically is correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so other point is so so unified HMI framework is transparent to the lower layer network things, just IP relying on IP. Uh, I, okay, thank you thank for you my very stupid much. question. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Last question. Last question. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, in the future plan, you uh, uh, in the future plan, uh, the okay. uh, audio file and uh, audio and and video is going to be supported. In that case, the uh, network bandwidth will be a problem. Mm. In that in that case. Yes, of course. Network bandwidth is the very big problem, and. Uh, so now, now we our framework named unified HMI. So we want to we want to control all HMI. But now we are only focusing on graphics applications, and we are planning to now next to support a uh, video, but uh, just developing now. Okay, sorry. Do you, do you already have a uh, do you already already have a solution of that? Uh, we are now <laughs> conducting now. Working on. Uh, thank you. Working now. Thank you.
OK. Uh, sorry, finally, uh, I want a special thanks for Tsubone-san. He is the first developer of unified HMI. <laughs> and he is not in my company now. <laughs>